Hello and good Monday, June 23rd, 2008. I'm Joanne and this is Rocket Boot. Sublimation, the new word in vogue this week used to describe the amazing discoveries by humans on Mars. That's the new word in vogue this week used to describe the amazing discoveries by humans on Mars. Let's take a look. With six vehicles in operation around Mars, the two Mars rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, ESA's Mars Express Orbiter, the Mars Global Surveyor, and now the Phoenix and its mothership, the Mars Odyssey Probe, we certainly have a shot at getting humans on Mars. But what more? This animation, uh, these two pictures taken from the same vantage point on the north of Mars, show what scientists are explaining as an indication of water. Water on Mars. Sublimation occurs when low pressures and temperatures below the triple point undergo a change which leads to phase bypassing by phase transition. More simply, sublimation is when a solid skips liquid and turns right to gas. This happens to ice cubes in freezers and seemingly water on the low pressure planet Mars. While of course this is a good theory, there are a few other possibilities that might explain what happened to the white blocks seen in the NASA photos. Or perhaps... Or even... Maybe not as likely, but you never know. Anyone care to guess? New developments in the Battle of Pluto. After a rough cycle of being undiscovered, then classified as a planet, then declassified to a dwarf, and last week, as we reported, becoming known mostly as Plutoid, many scientists are pissed. And thus the great planet debate, science as process. A scientific conference and educator workshop will be held in the middle of August in an attempt to further deconstruct the hermeneutical destiny of Pluto. While I haven't been able to find any evidence to support the claim that this conference was brought about by the overly concerned Rock Shop Union, which stands to lose big bucks on reprinting all those little tags that go along with rocks found by humans on Pluto, for as far as I know there aren't any, but you never know who might be pressing for the future. Red paperclip guy back on the circuit. He swallowed the cat to catch the bird. He swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wriggled and jiggled and wiggled inside him. He swallowed the spider to catch the fly. But I don't know why he swallowed that fly. Perhaps he'll die. I'll trade this autographed copy of the red paperclip book for the best offer anyone leaves in the comments on rocketboom.com or youtube.com slash rocketboom. All trade suggestions will be read. Only serious ones will be considered. Must exist to play. Some rules apply. In creative biotechnology. The world's first webmail service using live snail mail. Meet agent Cecil, Austin and Muriel. Each snail has an RFID chip attached to its shell and whenever it happens to make its way by a dispatch centre, an RFID reader checks the snail's status. If the snail has not already been given a letter for delivery, the next email in the queue will be transmitted to the snail in the hope that the snail will eventually wander upon the drop-off station on the other side of the tank, where another RFID reader will scan the message and send it electronically to the intended recipient. One more. To say what least, it's a work in progress. Dear Pluto, I'll be expecting you soon. Love, Joanne. Where the hell is Matt? Exactly two years to the day after his first Dance Around the World video, Matt has just released his second effort, and what a fine effort it is. Free travel to 42 countries, this time with thousands of people joining in, all underwritten by his sponsor, Stride Gum. And where the hell is Joanne? 